Well, Holly, Living Walls, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about Living Walls outdoors. Uh, now we're going to talk about Living Walls indoors. Very different transition, but it can be done in unique and uh, fashionable ways. Yeah, you can you can make a small living wall. You can do a larger living wall. It's a little bit different because what well, finances and size, right? Finances, size, and also just to think about that living walls could be um, naturally damp in a way, so you have to be aware of where you're putting it and also how you're watering it, things like that. So, what are the benefits? Is one, it's decorative. Um, to biodiversity, which basically means that it will um, increase kind of the plant the plant life in your home and the plant diversity, the plant differences, etc. So maybe maybe you grow like a bunch of smaller plants and you have because you have the space for it because you, that you can put them vertical. Yeah, living wall. You're you're fi- fixating them onto a vertical structure. And some type of means. Now, there is commercial grade indoor uh, walls that have lights that cascade the, the lumens down upon the plants. And there's ones that you would put if you're in an, an area like a three season porch where you're going to get ample light. You just need the structure. So there's many different uh options when it comes to a living wall indoors, as well as the plants in which you can plant in it. Right. So, yeah, so they're biodiverse. They're also, they can be kind of soundproofing, not necessarily soundproofing, but sound absorbing because you're affixing plants and and soil. So if you have maybe a room that's kind of echoey, it can help absorb some sound. And then it's air purifying. Plants are naturally purifying. So that's how it works. And you can, another benefit is you can grow edible plants. And because you're growing it up, you have um, less less uh footage what's it called real estate right that you're using. so first thing you want to find the right space um i mean you can put it basically anywhere but you want to make sure that a you can reach the plants and b um that you're not allowing like say you chose a narrow hallway you might be walking into those plants or if you have children or pets that could easily access the lower plants you may want to keep that in mind and Maybe put um, something, maybe put a bit higher, whatever. So think about where you want to put it. Um, If you are going for full sun plants, then you need full sun space. Yes. So, yeah. So that's I mean, some of the non edible plants in which you can grow could be ferns, palms, ivory, uh, ivy, um, uh, Sphagnum, uh, moss, you can grow some of that. Spider plant, you can grow that. There's many different options in which it comes to a living wall versus, uh, you know, just having them on a mantle somewhere. And the other thing to keep in mind is you can prune the plant. So if you're afraid, if you, maybe you have a spider plant now and you're like, this thing's a little bit out of control, you can prune it back. Any of these plants. And a lot prune. of them that you prune back, you can propagate. Right. You can do the, that too. The, with the cuttings, yeah. So you can have all of your walls, living walls. With yeah, if you really want to, yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, if you want to have all your walls, living walls, that's yeah, that's what you can do. Yeah. Okay, so you want to find the right space. You want to prepare the surface. So you might want to put down an extra coat of paint, um, and then you want to consider some sort of drip tray system. So maybe use a drip tray system in the pots itself. Maybe you have an additional drip tray. Um, decorative put other plants below the living wall on the floor or on a small table something like that um you can do this automated you you can yeah, have you it can, w- can automated weddings and and remember the the amount of moisture these plants need is based on the plants in which you are growing certain plants require more of a moist environment other ones need more of a dry environment like you could have a whole living wall of herbs uh mint lemon balm basil chives pursing sage thyme cilantro you could have all of those in a living wall you could have an herb living wall you can have an ornamental living wall but it all depends on one how dry is your your home also, that would that would dictate how much water is being evaporated out of the soil and how rapidly you need to hydrate the plants in which you're growing. So it, your mileage is going to vary. So we're just kind of giving you a, a an umbrella knowledge of this, and you've kind of got to dig in deeper based on what but you're most, wanting to do. Most house plants only require watering once a week. True. Yeah. 
So, and but here a, you've got a real dry house in the winter yeah, yeah, with that heat true. based on fire heat, radiator heat, or uh, furnace heat. That's a different type of heat and different type of uh, removal of moisture from the soil. That's a good point. You do have to think about that, especially some of these. If you bought like a living wall pre made setup, those are smaller usually smaller um, like container type things. So you want to fix your vertical planters. There's lots of options for do it yourself, things you can purchase, um, you know, kind of think about the space, how you want to attach them to the wall. Do you want to hang, have them hanging down from the ceiling? Do you want to just attach a general thing to the wall? Do you want something that's more of like on a stand? Um, so there's some options there and then you would choose your plants. Joey kind of touched on that. There's a lot of different options, um, whether it be herbs to house plants to specific types of house plants to, uh, maybe a combination. And just because you want to grow herbs doesn't mean you have to grow all the herbs. You can grow the ones that you know that you want to use. Now, with living walls, again, we're looking at anything from however big you want it to be to a four by four or two foot wide by three foot high, uh, 24 inches by 16 inches. You go online and search living wall for indoors, and you're going to have a vast variety of options and a vast variety of price points that you can choose from, from very simplistic to very elaborate, from wall, uh, from you know anything that hangs on the wall to something that is in a base that can be pushed up to the wall and has lights incorporated into it. So there's many different options. And even if you are not, say, a gardener, and I, we know that people listen to this program who do not garden, and thank you very much for that, it, it's be, you can do this as a, a decorative or as a conversation piece as well. And even with maybe very little knowledge of what plants do or grow or how to maintain, you can be very successful at this with a few minutes on the thing called the World Wide Web. But be cautious of the information you're gathering. Make sure you have two, three yeses for every one no you find. Right. You want to make sure you're using your liable source. Reach out um, to us. Reach out to us. University extensions, even a lot of these like gardening, magazine, websites, they all have great information. So once you set up your living wall, you want to pot your plants and then you want to put the plants into the pockets or the structure, whatever you want to call it. I personally would, if I was going to do living wall, especially indoors, I would get something that I can have individual Removal, removable yeah, but, uh, yeah. Can, you know it's got the framework and the pot sets in each yeah. individual little slot i would prefer that over something right. that's attached to um like a canvas or something yeah where it's all coming down at once or it's it's all or nothing yeah because i feel like that would just be easier for ease of access well a plant if a plant dies you can remove it if you need to harvest it you can physically take it out and yeah. remove it. it it's easy to see what's going on and then slide it back in its little slot right you can check the roots things like that and with that being said, you can find um, house plants that have shallow roots if you are concerned about the depth. But most house plants don't really have a super strong root system, so um, that's why they're house plants. Yeah. So I've noticed that when I've had house plants or I had an office plant, and then um, when I started working from home, I brought it home, and I think it missed the office environment. Uh -huh. It was too it bright. Yeah, yeah, I think it was too bright. Like died. Uh huh. Um, so yeah, it, and that I've heard of other people saying that they brought their houseplant home and it didn't do so well. Um, but anyway, so yeah, you want to, um, put the plants, pot the plants and then Joy had mentioned irrigation, some sort of irrigation system. There's a lot of, you, you don't even have to invest in irrigation. There's a lot of creative ways to irrigate. I've seen people use like soda bottles and i think it's fishing wire or string or something yeah it drips down yeah it drips down um so you can get creative there's even like pretty little bulb looking things that you put water and you turn it over and it's almost like an oya but it's a little bit prettier you can spend all day at your independent garden center in the house plant area and find all the you know fun things um accessories or whatever you want to call them odds and ends thingamabobs Whatever. Well, Walton's has more than thingamabobs and whatchamacallits. They have everything but the meat that you can imagine in order to get your processing done. They also have spices to season what you're cooking, whether you are cooking your meat, 
or your vegetables. Yeah, we are brought to you today by our spot and sponsor, Walton's. We know you care about where your food comes from. You might be canning and preserving. But now we're getting to the time of year where you might be thinking about um, some sort of other harvesting, the meat harvesting. And they have everything you need, equipment, seasoning, supplies. You can make sausage, jerky, any other meat product your way to your high standards. They also have a website called meatgistics.com. It's an informational website to help you make the most the best finished product. Walton's even has a full line of meat grinders, mixers, sausage stuffers, spices, all the good things. They can help you go from animal to edible. Walton's everything but the meat. You can use code GROW50, GROW50 to save 10% off orders of $50 or more at waltonsinc.com. For more information, please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.